Oke. Okay. Hai guys. Guys, just someone comment on this and see, can they do it? Yeah, okay. Hello guys, please join here. I'm so sorry, I had to stop that previous video. So I'll just, hi, hi. Yeah, now it's showing. Thank you. I think I did some mistake before. So I'm just waiting everyone to join. Am I audible or uh, am I audible? Are you all able to hear me? Can you just comment? It will be easier for me to do that. I can just do some settings quickly. Hi. Okay. 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 Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I think now I can see the comments. Okay. Yes, I can see the chats. I can see the chats. I'm getting, yeah. Hi, hi. We are just waiting for people to join in. Hello. I can see a lot of people joining in. And she's stuck. No, no, you can. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, we can just wait for two minutes. I can just do some settings. Okay, this virtual teaching is something like, you know, too difficult for people like us who are so used to teach all the time standing in front of live audience, you know, looking at the expressions and now we have to look at the messages. So yeah. In just uh, wait for two minutes. I can see a lot of people joining in. Hi, hi, hi to everyone. And yeah. So I guess few of the uh, few of those left because of that previous one. And thanks to everyone who have messaged me when it was not clear before and the messages were not there. It means a lot. Thank you so much. I think we are already late so we can just start with it at least with my introduction so hello everyone uh, thank you for joining me in and uh, I am Dr. Samana Sayed of course you all must have joined looking at that poster and brochure which you have got so I really don't need to you know give my introduction again but still since we have a lot of time and we are waiting for people to join in a small introduction I can give about uh, myself. I'm Dr. Samana Sayya, cardiopulmonary physiotherapist from Mumbai. Uh, I am practicing since nine years and uh, I have, uh, I mean, I'm a certified therapy, uh, cardiovascular therapist as well from Singapore and as well as a pulmonary rehabilitation therapist. And uh, today's topic is about chest physiotherapy. Uh, so the name of the topic is myths and facts of chest physiotherapy. Along with that, we will be uh, having uh, an overview of the cardiopulmonary physiotherapy that we all know, of course. So um, we can just wait for two minutes and uh, then we can start with the real lecture. Now, it's fine. 
so i really need uh, help of uh, you guys you know if in between anything goes off any messages or any video then please just keep on commenting uh because that can be really helpful and uh, this is my first youtube live so you know like even i am learning thanks to you all <laughs> okay so let us start with the topic uh so when we talk about chest physiotherapy or let us be more specific cardio pulmonary physiotherapy or let us make it more more specific that is cardio respiratory physiotherapy right so the first thing that comes into a mind of an individual jo nahi karta hai like a non chest physio or a non cardio physio is what like when i was a bachelor and when i was into a uh, post uh, into my uh, this thing internship and all that so jab mujhe koi bolta tha ki chest physiotherapy and do you want to pursue your career in chest physiotherapy which i never thought i will do first thing that used to come into my mind was it's too boring and what to do in that and i'm sure bahut sare students ye zarur sochte honge and i can actually bet on that so you know why i'm conducting today's lecture is i hope people have joined so that i can start with that uh, what is not working okay i think video is working right fine so uh, can can just five or six of you give me thumbs up that okay it's all perfect so i can just continue okay 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 thank you thank you so much thank you fine so uh, you know what i did is like i i i'm i'm taking workshops in years and i'm not into academics but i am into a hardcore uh, training and you can say educating people about uh, cardio pulmonary physiotherapy and uh, even um, spreading a lot of uh, thank you thank you and sp uh, spreading a lot of general awareness as well uh, amongst those who are um, like who are not related to any kind of medical field so you know what i did was he uh, yeah so i will be keeping it dear i will be keeping it mixed main hindi english dono mein mix rakhungi agar aapko koi bhi aisi language mein agar aapko lagta hai if i have spoken something in uh, english and you want me to translate it i'll do that if i have said something in hindi and if you want me to translate it in english you can put it in the comments if i don't miss the comments then definitely i'll do that because i want you all to understand and uh, at least aap samjhe jo main aapko ye lecture mein samjhana chahti hu theek hai so yeah so let us start with the Uh, with the coolest thing that i can just start with is you know uh, i spoke to a lot of interns a lot of final year students and uh, over the period of time when i started taking workshops maine bahut logo se pucha ki unka view kya hai chest physiotherapy ko leke especially final year freshers and interns in. so i got a list of their uh, you what you can say their views and opinions about वो क्या फील करते हैं अबाउट चेस्ट फिजियोथेरेपी बिकॉज यू नो कि फाइनल ईयर में आप एटलीस्ट थोड़ा थोड़ा लेक्चर्स लेने लगते हैं एंड देन यू नो यू स्टार्ट सॉरी लेक्चर्स नहीं प्रैक्टिकल्स करने लगते हैं एंड देन यू स्टार्ट गोइंग फॉर पोस्टिंग आप हॉस्पिटल्स पे जाना स्टार्ट कर देते हैं ठीक है सो दैट्स वाई यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू नो वॉट इट इज लाइक दैट वॉट यू कैन डू एंड वॉट आर चेस्ट केसेज हाउ यू कैन डू सी चेस्ट केसेज वॉट आर द ट्रीटमेंट दैट यू कैन डू येस ओके आई एम आई एम टॉपिंग इन इंग्लिश डोट वरी सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द व्यूज of my patients okay uh, of my students and uh, my interns and freshers jo maine itne saal mein ya over the period of time i have just gathered so the first thing is what my students tell me when i talk to them about uh, chest physiotherapy is the most boring posting it's like the most boring posting there is nothing to do and ma'am what to do other than postural drainage percussion vibration and breathing exercises third thing ma'am when there is so much less to do why should we spend 2 years of masters in doing chest physiotherapy the second thing is ma'am we get minimal exposure to cases of heart lungs and surgeries so i don't think so it's worth me wasting my time on learning chest physiotherapy if you can just tell me yes okay if you have experienced all these things then few students even said that there is no no future in it and there is no money because it is very much restricted in treatment and patients then another person told me ma'am there is no clinical postings we are so much into clinical postings and we want our clinic in future then why should we do chest physiotherapy when i know ki that i cannot open my clinic in future 
and i think this can be relatable to a lot and lot of physios even my mindset was like that only when i started doing it like a decade before then more, other than that ma'am nothing much to explore kyu itna time waste karne ka why to waste time when i can't explore much into the uh, much in this field then the best one which i hear like uh, almost everywhere and you know like uh, uh, whatever you say like jahan pe bhi jao whatever workshops i take this is the commonest thing which i will hear uh, which i usually hear from final years third years and interns that is ma'am it is too scary to enter icu but when we go inside we realize that there is so little to do so it is like ki it we get so much anxious to go to icu and see the patients but when we start doing it we realize there is nothing to do so why to actually go through all that anxiety and all that fear it's better that we don't even show interest in that right so you know like these are the basic things that you know when i when you start traveling to different places countries for teaching and all these are the views that we hear from a lot of students from a lot of physiotherapists as well not only just students from a lot of professionals who are studying and who are practicing just physiotherapy even they have the same views so basically i really don't believe in any of these and this shows that this shows that you know still being an indian physiotherapist we are so much constricted when it comes to chest physiotherapy or cardiopulmonary physiotherapy now if all of those who have who are attending me and all of those who are there if you all are there on my facebook and if you can relate what i'm saying now you must have seen that in most of my posts i always mention chest physiotherapy instead of writing cardiopulmonary or cardio respiratory physiotherapy or even if i write cardiopulmonary you will always find a slash and chest physiotherapy after that you know why because i think that cardiopulmonary physiotherapy what we speak is something that is scary and we actually ourselves make it scary of course the fact is that we are dealing with cardiac and we are dealing with pulmonary cases definitely but when as a layman if suppose you are some patient or you are some any other general person who doesn't know anything about physiotherapy or who just know that physiotherapy is about joints and muscles and whatever so if, if i will tell them about cardiopulmonary physio that person will be like okay fine theek hai kuch hoga but when i will tell about chest physio then that person can understand okay there is something about chest also let's make it more easy let's make it more easy okay so if suppose like people love doing sports okay a lot of physios i love i love uh, practicing muscular skeletal and sports physio so now just compare it Ch- sports physio kitna you know, like it's so cute to actually you know say sports physio wow sports physio neuro physio i have a lot of neurotherapists joining over here neuro physio it's simple we know it's neuro physio then then comes your um uh, ortho muscular skeletal that is also very very much relatable then comes your cardiopulmonary yeah? like wow cardiopulmonary lungs heart something that i have not even studied during my bachelor something i have just rectified and you know just ignored and just attended like five five ten ten marks of questions now you expect me to actually know about that no i am not going to do that <laughs> that is what the basic general myth of indian population is and that is very true and it is very much acceptable because i have also gone through that when i started practicing it or doing it a decade before so that's the reason this lecture is there first initially to make you understand what exactly chest physiotherapy is when we talk about chest physiotherapy what are the scopes in it so the topics that we will be covering today i will just give you a small brief of that so that you know you can stay till the end and talk discuss and you know ask your questions and know more about it so talking about the myths the first thing that i will be starting with is as i said before in the thing that being a chest physiotherapist or when you have to see chest uh, physio cases there is very little to do very little to do very much constricted in the field and too much to learn like you know knowing all the heart mechanics your respiratory mechanics lung mechanics and when it comes to your practical part it is like nothing so why to waste time right so that's what the first myth is so now clearing that myth let us just go back to the basic definition of cardiopulmonary physiotherapy i am not going to use a lot of technical terms i am not going to tell you the exact definitions or you know if you expect something from me that you know ki aaj ke lecture se main ekdam aise viva ka preparation karke jaunga to so no 
I am not going to do that because I want you all to actually understand this thing in a much simpler way so that after this, if you try explaining this to someone else, you can again use that simpler method and explain them as well. So when we talk about cardiopulmonary physiotherapy, cardiorespiratory physiotherapy or chest physiotherapy, what does it mean? Dealing with cardiac issues, dealing with pulmonary issues directly or in conditions, indirectly, everything. Okay. So now when I speak about chest physio, first thing that comes in our mind is ICU. And you all cannot deny that. You all cannot deny that. Chest physio ka naam lete hi. First thing Indian physios ke naam pe jo dimag mein aata hai. The first thing that they understand uh, that they can relate it with this ICU. Right? So it starts from ICU. Okay. Then the patient goes to ward. So yes, the, uh, the physiotherapist continues in the ward. And the patient gets discharged. Right? So our role as a chest physiotherapist is not just treating the patient in the ICU and then in the ward and then saying Tata bye 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 to patient ki now ab dekh lo, now you see what you can do and just you start your normal life. No, our role is to treat that patient from the time the patient got admitted in the ICU to the time that patient is getting discharged and that patient is getting back to his normal activities effectively without any cough, without breathlessness or reduced cough, reduced breathlessness, improved lung mechanics. And that can be done only by the physiotherapist for sure. So that big role we have, but which we constrict into just the hospital setup and the hospital settings. So when I talk about chest physiotherapy, we need to really understand that our role is not limited only to the chest cases or to the heart cases or maximum surgeries or lung diseases or, uh, you know, like PEDS or uh, you can say neuro cases and all that. No, we have a huger and a broader scope being a chest physiotherapist. So our role is just not in the ICU or in the hospital. We have a huge role in clinical settings as well. And being a chest physiotherapist, you can have your own clinical setting with your own OPD patients. So that is the first thing that a lot of physios don't understand is that hey, it is not necessary when you are a chest physiotherapist that you have to be in the hospital setup only or you have to just stuck, uh, get stuck to a hospital setting only. You can have your own clinical settings. You can have your own set of patients who are having those issues, who are not having those issues. So now comes the, we will start with something very much basic, which is called as breathlessness. Okay. Now, without going to cough part and everything, let us start from something which is very much relatable and which is very much uh, like acceptable for, for all those who are listening to it. Breathlessness, dyspnea, that is difficulty in breathing. Now, when I say that and I say, okay, I'm a chest physiotherapist and I deal with breathlessness. Okay, so what what it uh, what it uh, what can you perceive through that? Okay, fine, breathlessness, right? So now you will start thinking about the diseases. Okay, so where, where can you get breathlessness? If you have any heart issues, if you have any, if you had any heart surgeries, or if you have any kind of respiratory issues, yes, of course you will get breathlessness. Okay, fine. Now even a person can get uh, can get breathlessness with any other uh, neurological diseases as well. Yeah, very much true, very much correct, right? So. We start thinking about a lot of diseases. Okay, fine. Ma'am, ne abhi breathlessness bola hai. To breathlessness kisme kisme hoega? Where all you can uh, start thinking? Like where all you can start relating this breathlessness with, right? But no. You know what? I run a pulmonary rehabilitation setup, and I see sixty percent of the cases who are not having any kind of respiratory or any kind of heart diseases. And we treat breathlessness even for those who are not having any kind of underlying diseases. And that's how you need to understand where to actually improve your scope as a chest physiotherapist. So now talking about breathlessness, let us just get back to what we started with. The reasons of breathlessness can be cardiac disease, respiratory disease. It can be a bad posture as well. So now I'll just show you something, just very much uh, something which you can relate with is, I hope you all can see this. Is it uh, visible? Or do you know? Okay, forget about it. If it's not visible, then I will not. Yeah. Okay, see. So you must have seen this, you know, bad posture ka pictures and all, a lot of bad posture. Ka, ke, haan, okay, this is your sway back, slouched back and everything. Now, you know what? 
the most of the cases that we get in OPDs these days, okay, if it's not visible, it's okay, I will show you. Our patients or people who are working in MNCs, who are working in uh, companies where they have like a job, uh, uh, they're always in a slouched posture or in phones and all whole day and they come to us saying that ma'am we don't know what is there our chest x-ray is normal our pft is normal our all the reports are normal but still we get breathlessness and that's why we are we, uh, we are referred to you so now when i will see such case i'll be like okay ma'am like how will I treat you because you don't have any disease and I'm a chest physiotherapist I am supposed to treat a patient who has got a lung and a heart disease but you don't have anything so you please go that's what we can't do so you need to understand in today's generation if you'll find a lot of in fact a lot of people who are attending this must also have experienced this that they must be getting any kind of breathlessness or dyspnea or fatigue were followed by breathlessness with overactivity and everything and that can happen because of bad posture because that can restrict your lung movement so very simple thing if you have a habit of sitting like this if you can see me okay sitting like in a slouch manner or something and second uh, suppose if someone is scoliotic not uh, a permanent scoliosis or a congenital but someone like who is just using a lot of phone on one side and you know just being in one side position or uh, being in a position where he, they are actually tilting their spine more on one side even those patients can get breathlessness and that can happen because of a simple reason that you are not allowing and you're not giving enough area to your lungs to expand which is very much important Got it. So if you will see in a lot of cases, in a lot of people who have got kyphotic posture, a lot of cases where they have rounded shoulders or they are slouching a lot, they usually get symptoms of breathlessness, which is just related to their posture. Correct their posture, give them postural training, start breathing exercises, train their respiratory muscles and see the difference. And this is like something you can do at your clinical setups as well. So this is one thing where you can actually focus being a chest physiotherapist and you know you can improve your role in that thing as well so this is just a small example now getting back to again icu part we will just keep on breaking and coming ahead so going back to the icu part now when i talk about a chest physiotherapist the role of chest physiotherapist in the icu what oh, what comes in your mind i wish you all can answer you know like it's so easy for me to actually interact with proper a live audience so when i talk about chest physiotherapy we always start counting like enlisting things okay that is postural drainage positioning percussion vibration okay now if the patient is being conscious then breathing exercise thank you so much for writing over there breathing exercises then after that, of course, a patient, if the patient is in ICU, mobility exercises, general mobility for a simple reason, which all will accept that, yes, you have to uh, just because the patient is bedridden and we don't need that. We don't want the patient to go into contracture. So we'll start giving mobility exercises, lung clearance, everything, everything. OK, still, still, this is very less than what you can do in chest uh, in ICU setup as a chest physiotherapist or as a normal physiotherapist. So the first thing that I want you to always Remember, the moment you go into the ICU, the moment you enter into the ICU, the first thing that you have to start thinking about is bronchial hygiene. Bronchial hygiene should be the first term that should come into your mind when you are going in any kind of ICU setup or when, I, when you're going to treat any patient in the ICUs. So when I talk about bronchial hygiene, first, before that, before for that, I want to tell you, you know, always, always, uh, you should actually use this term because it's very impressive and I have been using it since years and trust me, it works because you like bronchial hygiene. Okay, so this girl knows a lot and that's how you actually, you know, gain the trust of the entire medical fraternity. Like, right? fine, now she knows the, she knows her work and she'll be able to do it. So remember that. So when I talk about bronchial hygiene, bronchial hygiene means keeping your lungs clear, keeping your lungs aerated keeping your lungs well oxygenated. So everything, like how you maintain your general hygiene, that's how you have to maintain the hygiene of lungs. And that's what you have to do. One second. When you enter the ICU and whenever we talk about any kind of bronchial hygiene. What has happened? Uh, just a second. Okay. Yeah. 
so sorry i think something happened with the uh, the network is not clear okay is it clear now blur is it clear now the video is clear okay okay cool so as i said the first thing is bronchial hygiene so talking about bronchial hygiene now let us see as a physiotherapist what all we consider in the term bronchial hygiene first is as i said clearing your lungs so the moment you enter the icu what will you do everything is clear okay what will you do you will start clearing the lungs directly no the first thing is you have to read the file of the patient you have to actually go and see what the case of the patient is so now you will see the case and you will start treating the patient wrong again then you have to go and see the chest x ray of the patient then after the chest x ray you have to do your own diagnosis this is the thing which is missed by a lot of physiotherapists a lot of chest physiotherapists and i really maybe not the chest physiotherapist let me clear it but this is what i want you all to consider the moment you enter the icu you have to make your own own diagnosis even in the worst of the cases so even if you have any case where you see if okay, i you have an x ray you have a written report which says copd or bronchitis then you can see the x ray you know okay fine the air entry uh the air entry means like you know like the air entry is reduced in the upper lobe or lower lobe fine you've seen it just keep it aside take your stethoscope do your auscultation and see where you find the air entry is reduced where you find the secretions are there and then correlate it with your findings many times you know what happens if the x ray has been taken like hours ago like 14 hours or 10 hours ago there are slight changes in the uh, findings of the airways and secretion so real uh, you need to really focus on that and actually start making your own diagnosis in terms of bronchial hygiene like whenever you are seeing a case with uh, any kind of lung uh, lung issues and then go ahead with the treatment so that is the first thing so you do your diagnosis then you start working towards the bronchial hygiene part so the first thing that you have to do is of course positioning and postural drainage now when we talk about postural drainage i know a lot of people yes auscultation is must that's what i said so um, okay clear the video i don't know i'm okay i'm getting a lot of things yeah so of course maintaining the basic hygiene like mask gloves and everything that is something i don't think so i should need to tell my physios about that i'm just talking about the treatment part so when we talk about postural drainage okay i know a lot of people know postural drainage so i am not going much in detail with that but just one thing which i always teach my students and teach people is like like you know because i was doing that when i was young and i was studying you know like i used to just rotto fa you know mug up those postural drainage positions because it was so uh, difficult at times you know to actually remember all those positions but with of course with experience and all i realized that you know you really don't need to actually uh, know or you don't really need to mug up those uh, postural drainage positions if you just remember the simple funda is Uh, directing the secretions towards your central airways so if i can just i hope if you can see this we will just try because we are talking a lot about lungs so i hope just tell me if you all can just see this um, i don't know if it's visible okay is this visible is this visible can you all see the lung can you all see the lungs can you please tell me give me that balloon Okay, is it visible? Okay, so if you can see the lung over here, this is the the central part. If you can see that tube kind of uh, structure, that is your trachea. Okay, and all that you have to do is you have to just drain your lung in such a way that this center part. where this bifurcation you can see that tracheal bifurcation which we call as carina that your secretions should actually get drained over there so since we don't have a spine what i did is i made my own lung so now you will have to tolerate with these balloons you know blazers with balloons so okay so you know it's okay if the diagram is not visible you can just you know go with this thing i don't know why it is blurred so can you all see the balloon can you all see the balloon 
Yes? Can you all see the balloon? Okay, can you all see the balloon? Forget about the lungs, it's okay if it's not visible. I have got a better lungs of my own. Yeah. Okay, yes, can you all see it? Cool. So imagine this is my lung, okay? Of course, the most pathetic lung that I can ever show you. So as we know that this is our trachea, okay? And it bifurcates around the T4 level or you can say sternal angle into two parts. And it goes into right lung or left lung. So suppose this is my left lung, okay? Let us keep it here. So if we know, if I keep my lung, the position of the lung is this way, you know? Part aage jata hai and the posterior part is more on the posterior side. So this. And a slight part of your lung is above your clavicular line. So that means your bifurcation is here, but your part, the slight part of your lung goes above that. Right? So now, if I want to drain the secretions, what I'll do is I have to keep on moving lungs in such a way that it goes to this central part. And that's what we do in postural draining. So now we suppose this is the lower lobe. And if I want to drain the lower lobe, what I'll do is I'll just put the head up and try to drain it to the center part. If I want to drain the outer lobe, like, uh, sorry, the lateral part, what I'll do is I'll sideline the patient and then try to put it over here. If I have to drain the upper part, which is above, this is your bifurcation and the upper part is over here. So then maybe I will just, if I want to do the posterior part, I'll try to Put the position of the patient in such a way that you know like it comes ahead and the secretion gets deposited over here so just imagine now in future whenever you go to see any kind of lung just remember this balloon that i have showed you okay and just remember ki, okay ma'am ne balloon bataya tha ma'am told me about some balloons so now this is my balloon imagine that lung as a balloon and then start draining it lower part head up upper part uh, sorry leg up upper part head up Okay, so if the lateral part is there, you have to make the patient come on the side. So similarly, that way you can just, you know, these are just basic hacks that you can immediately recollect, you know, that can help you to actually recollect about the postural drainage positions. Fine. So that is one thing. So go, postural drainage, of course, as I said, now I hope it's a little bit clear. Now if you will go back and, you know, you will study about the entire part, I'm sure now you can recollect with what I said. And you know why the reason why I teach always these things are because I try to bridge that gap. When I was a student, these things were really difficult for me. And you know, being a chest physiotherapist, it's really difficult to actually uh you know make people believe that okay, it is interesting, it is not that boring. And that's the reason you know I just try to think about ideas that can actually connect me with my students. So, okay, now going back to the second part. Now, postural drainage, okay, I have actually um so I have uh, positioned my patient in a proper position where his lung gravity ki taraf jayega, or secretions will move towards the gravity and then the patient can either remove it by suctioning, like I can remove it by suctioning, or if the patient is well uh, conscious and if the patient is not on ventilator on tracheostomy, then of course the patient can cough out. Okay, so that is the first thing of first part of bronchial hygiene. So it comes with, it starts with postural drainage, positioning, then we have Another technique which we called as stimulation, facilitation or PNF. PNF is, a still, uh, is still a very small part. And other techniques from which we can force the patient, we can actually facilitate the breathing pattern of the patient. So if the patient, uh, so if the patient is not conscious or if the patient is on ventilator, then of course your duty is just not to clear the lungs and just not to uh, suction it out and you know give the general mobility exercises and leave. No, you have to actually force that patient to breathe of course by not increasing the work of breathing of the patient. So there are a lot of techniques that we practice and we teach which is just not PNF or neurophysiological facilitation because Whenever, whenever I say or whenever I talk about techniques of facilitating or techniques of making the patient breathe, every student comes and tells me, ma'am, PNF for breathing. That is true. PNF, we have a lot of uh, PNF techniques as well. But other than that, there are 15 to 20 
new techniques which you can use and which you can give your patients with uh, which can actually help the patient to start in uh, start inspiring or you can say you can trigger a breath in a patient and that's what the main aim of a physiotherapist is so when we say that physiotherapist plays an important role in weaning the patient from the ventilation it just doesn't include clearing the chest it also includes facilitation of breathing it also includes that we have to help the patient to trigger a breath and that's what the role of a physiotherapist is as well and that's how a physiotherapist becomes an integral part of an icu of the icu unit so there are we, we used to get a lot of cases of collapses and all you know where uh, we used to be said like ki bas ye 24 ghante mein collapse cold the 24 hours may just open the collapse and then you we we have given patients a lot of chest physiotherapy like you know in 2 hourly or 4 hourly uh, duration we just to open up the collapse and it shows wonderful results so talking about chest physiotherapy you have to be really particular about what you are dealing with now there are a lot of conditions that you see in the chest uh, in the chest uh, in the icu setup but today since i have written in my post also and as promised i will be dealing more with the respiratory cases and i will be dealing more with the lung part you know lungs are my favorite i deal a lot with pulmonary rehabilitation and i really want you all to fall in love with lungs that is the reason i teach a lot about lungs okay so we will be talking about respiration uh, about lungs so uh, okay fine uh, so now when we talk about lungs and when we talk about respiratory diseases now since i said ki theek hai aapko icu mein jana hai you have to give bronchial hygiene you have to give you have to give uh, exercises to patients you have to give limb exercises and all so isse kya hota hai ki matlab what will you think fine if i have a respiratory condition these are the steps that i have to follow i have to give percussion if it is not contraindicated contraindications you have read in your school books in your college books i am not going into that those are very obvious like fractures and a lot of other cases okay if there are it is not contraindicated i will give that if it is contraindicated i will give vibration if the patient can breathe i will give breathing exercises i have to work on inspiration and that is the reason i will start giving a lot of inspiratory holds to patients and uh, if not inspiratory holds then deep breathing exercise because i have to work on the diaphragm of the muscle i have to work on chest expansion of the muscle i have to work on thoracic expansion of the muscle okay so uh, is the video fine now okay i don't know why it's happening um uh, no audio i think it's fine is the video fine now is the video blur by any chance yeah okay is it too blur okay 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 one second huh? i'll just fix something okay uh -huh. okay fine cool so that is how it goes so when we talk about these things it is very important for you to understand that when we talk about respiratory diseases you really need to understand what you are actually dealing with so respiratory conditions cannot be same for all the patients so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to show you simple uh, example of this so i have uh, if you all know about copd case that is chronic obstructive uh, chronic obstructive respiratory disease so i'm just showing you some x rays if you will see if i don't know if you can just see that yeah can you see the x ray is the video blur yet okay can you see the x ray yeah so just see these x rays this is also a case of copd this is again a lung of a copd patient this is again a lung of a copd patient and this is again a lung of a copd patient so i'm repeating it again just four x rays okay yeah can you see now yeah this is one x ray of copd this is another x ray of copd this is another x ray of copd and yes obstructive diseases i'm not talking specifically about copd 
fine so the reason of showing this is that when we talk about copd cases or or any kind of respiratory cases every patient has got different pathology every patient's lung is in a diff, uh, shows a different picture so one breathing exercise that you give to one patient cannot be given to another patient and that is very important for you to know and that's the reason we have to understand the entire entire lung mechanics while treating any such cases this is just an introductory lecture in future definitely i will be teaching you if i get chance and i will definitely teach you about different respiratory diseases and how to treat each respiratory disease separately and what all breathing exercises to give with this uh, to uh, give to the patients with the same diseases uh, with the different respiratory diseases now the reason of me taking this this lecture is of course the covid 19 pandemic that has you know uh, what happened okay the covid 19 pandemic that has occurred now kaisa ho gaya na now suddenly all the physios have to really uh, i i believe that that being a chest physiotherapist or being a physiotherapist you should really know now about pulmonary part of a physio of course a cardio pulmonary part only because to be very true we really don't know when this pandemic will stop okay first thing second thing of course in future we all have to see the cases of covid 19 or maybe the cases who have recovered covered from that even if you are not a chest physio even if you are in a clinical setup you will have to actually see the conditions uh, maybe jinko hua hoga pehle or those who must have recovered from that so basically it is very important for you all to actually know the important of respiratory mechanics and know what happens in chest icu and definitely the lecture is still going on so you don't have to worry uh, we will be talking about that uh, for all the messages that i'm getting so that is the reason why i keep on focusing on respiratory diseases is when it comes to cardiac cases when it comes to cardiac cases in icu usually except for few terminologies we have a uniformity in the case we know ki okay if this is the patient we have to depending on the incision of the cabg case or different type of cases still we have a limited treatment protocol that we have to follow when the patient comes for any kind of cardiac issues but when the patient comes for any kind of pulmonary issues the entire thing changes and your role as a physiotherapist becomes more detailed and you have to really work more with a respiratory case than that you do with a cardiac case because you know it differs in the conditions as per the individual as per individual's age as per individual's condition so you can just just give same chest treatment to all the cases of respiratory disease or all the cases who are having lung issues as what you give to a case of a uh, like as what you give to a cardiac case so isliye bahut hi zaruri hai ki aap ye samjho ki cardiac uh, respiratory diseases ki jo variations hote hain wo sab kya hote hain second thing now we are uh, like as we spoken about as we spoke about icu so when i talk about uh, chest physio uh, bronchial hygiene and everything coming to the other part that is about the limb mobility or you know like talking about the uh, uh general mobility exercises now i am getting questions about how you have you seen any covid and yes 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 pulse limb breathing okay uh let me just cover up the topic okay so you know later once i will say that i am done then you can actually ask me your questions and whatever we have missed out and this is not the only lecture that i am taking and chest physiotherapy is a huge, huge topic so of course i cannot complete everything in a day right so let us continue and then maybe i can help you now talking about the general mobility exercises as i said this is more of an overview lecture talking about the general mobility when we go to icu we give passive mobility passive mobility exercises upper limb ka flexion extension lower limb ka flexion extension why do we give that for the basic reason because the patient is bedridden we don't want the patient to get uh, any kind of contractures because of being bedridden right but that is not the only reason right that is not the yes i will take i am taking lecture that is not the only reason now we need to really understand that whenever you are treating any kind of respiratory condition even including the covid 19 case or including any kind of copd case including any kind of cardiac cases any kind of case where the patient has been on oxygen or jahan pe bhi patient ko breathless feel ho raha hai there is a fight that go, goes inside the patient's body and that fight is for the oxygen 
Okay, now this is very important and interesting if you all can really listen to it uh, once. So when I say about the term fight for the oxygen, what does it mean? Of course, my lungs are the, the prime, uh, like the, the way we breathe in. Of course, the lungs are the prime source where the body has oxygen. Jata hai. So when there is lack of oxygen, which we also call as hypoxia, what happens? That lung is fighting for oxygen for the survival, right? Now, if the lung is not getting enough oxygen, what lung will do? It will start taking oxygen from the bigger muscles of your body. For example, like your quadriceps, your hamstrings, your deltoid, your biceps. And what happens if you see most of the COPD cases or most of the cases of respiratory disease, that it be interstitial disease or anything, you will see that the patient's uh, lower limb muscles, especially the larger muscles of the body, and even sometimes the upper limb muscles, they go into atrophy and they go into weakness. Now, I have seen physios just treating the upper limb and lower limb for the sake of not getting contractures. But the fact is that you have to train the upper limb and lower limb, not just for the sake of contractures, but also for the sake of improving the weakness of those muscles and improving those atrophied muscles in terms of, of course, strength and endurance and everything. So there again, the role varies when you... Uh, it stopped not stopped I think so when you talk about various uh, variety of cardiac diseases or variety of respiratory diseases so again when the patient is discharged from the ICU when the patient is in the wards when the patient is leaving the wards you have to call those patients to your clinical settings to not only just treat their lungs but also to treat their upper limb and all the muscular dysfunction that they have got all the atrophy of the muscles and everything the video is okay there are such mixed reviews video stopped it's fine video stopped it's fine uh is video is working video is working uh, i've got four to five messages video is not working is my video working it's working yeah. okay 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 fine so yeah, so that is another thing that as a physiotherapist, you have to keep in your mind that it is just not about the lungs because you have been asked to actually treat a lung case or you have been asked to treat a chest case or you are just a chest physiotherapist. The moment you enter the ICU setup, you have to think like a physiotherapist. And when I say you have to think like a physiotherapist, it means that you have to think about everything from head to toe. Just forget about the concept of chest physio or musculoskeletal physio or neurophysio or anything. Holistic approach is something that as a physio, I request all my physiotherapists to actually work on. So that is one more thing. When you enter the ICU, you have to just not focus on the lungs, but focus on the muscles as well. And then comes your another technique that is breathing re-education, weaning off from the ventilators and all that okay so that is that was just actually we have uh, taken a lot of time for the first myth to be get uh, to clear that is too little to do and constricted in the treatment so now you know that there is nothing uh, called as a short case in fact if i have a lot of physios who are working in chest or uh, uh, any other uh, hospital setups and all that uh, tell me truly, okay, you can just send five, four comments over there. So I'll be happy to see that. Uh, tell me that don't you say chest case as a short case? I, I hope people who are working in hospital can relate with it. So whenever we get chest case, we used to always say that, okay, are a short case. Mila. And maximum treatment time is like 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Can anyone relate with that? So when can I repeat it? Videos blur. Videos blur. So can anyone relate to it? That most of the physios who work in hospital setup, they usually say that, you know, chest case mila hai, or short case at 10 minutes mein khatam kar ke aajaunga. And in fact, I've seen a lot of, lot of physios that, you know, who have actually, who really wait to get a chest case. And they get so happy that I have four, four chest cases. I have got four, four chest cases, so I'll finish my, finish my physiotherapy treatment quick. Right? See, I can see a lot of, lot of messages over there. Yes. Of course, varies from patient, but that is the mentality of most of the physios. And I won't deny that it wasn't my mentality like years back when I started this thing that, okay, fine, chest case is a short case. Let us just finish and quickly go. 
because the thing is that's what i'm trying to tell you is that our mentality is stuck up at some places there are many physios who will say no also of course i'm sure there are experienced physios over here in my uh, this thing also uh, who are viewing this but that's what i am trying to tell you is that since we do very little we know very little we treat we give very less time to such patients but actually a chest case needs proper 20 to 30 minutes of treatment and it is just not a continuous treatment because you cannot just play with the uh, breathing uh, rate or respiratory rate with the patient you have to give proper intervals like when i talk about any kind of pnf techniques or uh, when i have see when i'm talking about just giving a basic percussion like you know what sometimes i have seen people doing that they will just give the percussion ek side pe kiya turn kiya patient ko given and finished no you have to give percussion proper 200 300 counts of tappings whatever then you have to give the interval then you have to give it again if you are giving any kind of facilitation technique give it take breaks give for five sets again take breaks then give it because you can't strain your patient's breathing rate also and plus only giving 10 minutes of treatment may you are not even helping your patient right so that's the thing is that you have to actually when for for only for those who actually consider it as a short case that treating a chest case needs a lot of time a lot of techniques and a lot of efforts and that is the reason like even i take 45 minutes to an hour to treat a patient of any kind of chest uh, chest issue or anything so it was just like a basic myth which i got from the students and that is the reason i had put this thing up because i wanted to talk about this and no offense so now the second thing is as we spoke about the chest part now comes to the now comes uh, the main part that is the rehabilitation part on which i work um, uh, a lot so when we talk about cardiopulmonary rehabilitation this is again another myth uh, in india cardiac rehabilitation is really dominating and if you will see you will have uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, cardiac rehab setups and even a lot of cardio respiratory physios they try to you know just run for observerships for cardiac rehabilitation setups and everything but there are people who are actually practicing pulmonary rehab as well but it is not practiced as what it has to be being a chest physiotherapist so i work uh, i work a lot on pulmonary rehabilitation so what i believe is when we talk about cardio pulmonary rehabilitation as it is divided into two fields one is cardiac rehabilitation one is pulmonary rehabilitation it is very important for a physiotherapist to explore both the parts the only thing why i promote pulmonary rehabilitation more is it is cost effective and you can start it in your own clinical setup with of course a set of rules that should you that you should follow and you should have a good team to start with it unlike cardiac rehabilitation which is very expensive and you need a good investment in that so that is the difference that uh, i need to really uh, i wanted to convey to you guys now when we talk about the another thing that is i hope it's clear okay yeah i think it's clear yeah so as i said initially the first myth was there is nothing to do but there is a lot to do with your patients so just revising that thing again as i said chest you have got lots of techniques now i wish i could teach you all that in this time constraint that i had there are lots of techniques of facilitation there are lots of techniques where you can actually work on your patient's breathing rate there are a lot of techniques in which you can work on your patient's expiratory rate as well as inspiratory rate there are almost 30 to 35 types of breathing exercises that you can give to different different patients though we practice very less of those techniques like acbt autogenic drainage i practice autogenic drainage a lot in fact much more than acbt and maybe in future i will make a video or i'll share it with you guys uh, because i i get real good results with autogenic drainage for sure so these are the things when we say that very little to do with the chest physio that's not true there is so much to do but the thing is that the exposure is less and that's the reason we do very little with that now coming to the clinical part as i said being a physiotherapist you can always have your own pulmonary rehab department also you can get cases who have got dyspnea or breathlessness even in your clinical setups more than that you can treat patients or you can actually advise chest physiotherapy to patients whom you think are susceptible to getting any kind of breathlessness or dyspnea like a simple example a patient who is anemic or a patient who has got low vitamin d3 can also get breathlessness and with a good supplement of iron and a with with a proper supplement of vitamin d 
along with breathing exercises can really show amazing results in such cases especially in women so try this it really works because we have been trying it okay so other than that yes other than that uh, coming again back to the myths that we were talking advancements so we are not much aware of the advancements there are lots and lots of advancements and there are lots and lots of advanced techniques and researches that are coming up uh, with time in chest physiotherapy and it includes a lot of techniques like we are a lot of people are still stuck in that traditional zone of chest physiotherapy but if you will see in other countries like uk canada and australia respiratory physiotherapists not the therapists i'm talking about respiratory physiotherapists or pulmonary rehabilitation therapists are doing wonders in that like i did it from singapore and what i have done was like really something new for me so it is everywhere we are still very much limited with the advanced techniques and those advanced technique includes putting up your pulmonary rehabilitation techniques putting up your breathing exercises putting up your techniques in different fields of physiotherapist a uh, physiotherapy so when i say about different fields of physiotherapy that means including your techniques into sports physiotherapy including your techniques into musculoskeletal physiotherapy including your techniques into neuro uh, neurophysiotherapy like a simple example i can give you there is something called as exercise induced bronchoconstriction which happens only in sports people or athletes in such cases again chest physiotherapy therapy and breathing exercises a specific ones of course have shown amazing results in athletes and these are the cases with people who really don't have any chest condition but they get bronchoconstriction after a certain amount of activity so it is just a small example that i'm giving you okay so yes definitely that is what my aim is that i have to take a lecture on advanced techniques and that is the reason i want you all to know the basic because you know when i will teach you advanced i don't want you to all actually you know again i don't want to waste time on teaching all these basic things so this is like the overview okay so similarly even in pregnancy like uh, i am sure there are a lot of antenatal and postnatal physiotherapists who must have joined this and a lot if they will hear me in future i don't know even in pregnancy a chest physiotherapy techniques or breathing exercise has got a lot of role uh, with such kind of cases now why i our role is more specific because you know what we can actually deal with the complications of such cases right you can actually let us just take a small example pregnancy induced hypertension pregnancy induced asthma if you have heard about it now to be very true a lot of antenatal and postnatal sessions ke liye people go for yoga people go for general exercises now why should they come to you the reason that you should call them to you is just explaining them the complications that you can handle which cannot be handled by anyone who is not a medico or anyone who has not uh, uh, a good who is not having a good knowledge of proper lung or uh, human anatomy or human physiology so in such cases again you have a separate breathing exercises that you can give to such cases where they can work along with their other activities and exercises keeping control their pregnancy induced asthma or pregnancy induced hypertension and other things so just basic things i am telling you like where all we use our knowledge where all we use our practice to enlarge the scope of chest physiotherapy okay so other than that uh yes i said i think we spoke about the clinical work as well less money as well last thing is too scary to see and too little to do i think that we have really spoke about it so yes we do get a lot of people who say ma'am that i'm too anxious to enter the icu and i really can't enter the icu because there are so many leads and there are so many uh, connections and everything but let me tell you that you know it comes with practice and once you start seeing and dealing with icu case trust me it's a beautiful feeling i am experienced with it and of course there will be a lot of people over here who must have experienced it trust me when you see the differences in that chest x ray you feel so good that you know that is like out of that world i am sure it happens with every physio who treats a patient but that feeling is really beautiful so like every other physiotherapy field chest physiotherapy is also a beautiful field and you know like you need to really know what to do with the patient and how to go ahead with it so other than that uh you can definitely yeah 
even i feel proud to be a physio thank you i will be sharing yes this is as i said it's already been an hour and we are talking about the overview only now uh coming back to i'll just prefer answering some questions so then you know we can go ahead we can just take a break because you all are just listening a lot a lot from me only so we can just take two three questions and go ahead yes i got a question about uh, talk uh, teaching the technique uh, teaching the basic this thing see if you want to learn about the specific conditions of lungs as you have been asking me about you really need to understand it from the scratch okay you need to first understand the uh, need to understand the respiratory mechanics then how it happens then what happens where which part of the lung is affected which disease affects which part and then once you know all that trust me you can design your own proper treatment protocol and maybe in future i'll be taking lecture on that as well especially pneumonia and everything okay yes ventilator uh, is not uh, i don't think so i can teach much about the ventilators now over here but uh, yes next lecture is more about ventilator and deep uh, detailed icu setups yeah so covid 19 so okay because i wanted to talk about this uh, let us just discuss something about covid 19 uh, when we talk about covid 19 why i say that physiotherapists should know about it reason being that of course covid 19 affects primarily your respiratory system and then of course it leads to another uh, it uh, continues affecting other system as it becomes severe now the problem with covid 19 is it's a mutating virus it's a new virus and it's changing uh, you can say the as for the demographics of a country or a person the why the characteristic of virus is also changing so actual mein jo treatment one month pehle bhi rahega uska na physio ka that must have been changed by now so it is very important to know actually first ki how it started and how that thing started changing mutating and what all changes it actually produced in human body so when we talk about covid 19 just one small thing that i would like to tell you is you know the this disease is divided into three stages as per now mild moderate and severe okay and you need to know this that the treatment for mild the physiotherapy treatment for mild differs from what it is with moderate and the treatment of moderate differs from what it is in severe so you can not actually give the same treatment to mild cases moderate cases and the severe cases of covid 19 plus you need to really understand that you know when the patient is having a mild case the comorbidities that the patient is having along with that condition what has to be given for that now very simple example is we all know that if you have read my previous posts also i have written a lot about uh, chest physio uh, about covid 19 as well that the specification is pneumonia like the first symptom usually that they say in the lungs that can be seen as pneumonia and pneumonia happens not just in like in many mild cases you don't even get pneumonia as well but yes pneumonia which can later uh, go into ARDS or the patient is severely or critically ill the patient can go to ARDS acute respiratory distress syndrome directly so now you really need to understand that if a patient is in the mild case and if uh, you are giving a lot of deep breathing exercises to that patient to expand the lungs because you know you know that the patient may get pneumonia and we know that we have to give deep breathing exercises to that case right you know then i don't think so uh, you just can't uh, you just can give deep breathing exercise to any covid 19 case you will have to first understand that whether that patient is not progressing towards moderate condition or not if the patient is going into moderate condition then you have to actually categorize your breathing exercises you will have to make your breathing exercises or design your breathing exercises in such a way that it is not leading to or adding up to the work of breathing of the patient and the same thing you have to do when the patient is going from moderate to severe so it is like a lot of mechanics that you need to understand um yes see respiratory as you said but for respiratory condition the techniques doesn't change is it okay in mild and moderate what te- when you talk about respiratory conditions the techniques doesn't change they do get modified so that's the reason whenever we give anything we don't just when we talk about chest physiotherapy we don't just speak shit we have to talk everything that is evidence based 
now when i talk about evidence based doesn't mean that if one research has said one thing i will open that research and i'll blindly give it to that patient ki ha isko copd hai we will give this all things to copd isko pneumonia hai now this has happened in italy so in italy they have treated the patient of covid 19 with pneumonia or they have treated this patient in this way so we have to give it over here also same thing is there with even prone positioning uh, i am going to make a video on that so if you are following me just subscribe my channel because i am will be coming up with a video of uh, how to breathe uh, when you have coronavirus and all that things okay so when like just an example you must have read about it that you know give prone positioning to the patients who have covid 19 who are ards there is still a lot of variations in that okay there are a lot of variations in that as well you just can't give prone breathing to every patient who is having covid 19 there can be uh, increased labored breathing or you can say increased work of breathing also you can add up to the breathing uh, effort of a patient if you are just blindly giving prone positioning to everyone so you need to really understand when you are treating a patient of covid 19 and that's the reason i am coming up with another lecture of role of physiotherapist in covid 19 where i want to start from the scratch and teach everything and that will be a lengthy lecture that cannot finish in a, in an hour or two where i will be teaching about everything all the techniques that we can do and all the techniques with the comorbidities that we can do with that okay um uh, thank you so much nancy so we of teaching okay so i think you know this was a very uh, basic lecture and i have not even uh, to be very true you know i don't even feel that i have shared one fourth of my exp expertise or one fourth of what i know about a chest being a chest physiotherapist basically this lecture was for you all to understand you know being a chest physiotherapist is really uh, not that uh, what do you say that boring as you think of and it can not be that frustrating also as you think of you know you won't believe it being a physiotherapist like you know i have got such reactions when i started my chest physio career like i am a hardcore musculoskeletal therapist as well i work a lot in clinical settings also and i work a lot in icu settings as well i love treating musculoskeletal cases what i think is an added benefit for me being a chest physiotherapy is i make my approach holistic because i concentrate on the vital organs also i concentrate on the musculoskeletal part also but you know that's what it is we don't need to constrict ourselves being a chest physiotherapist there are lots and lots of things that you can do you can work wonderfully well in ergonomics antenatal postnatal you can work wonderfully well being a part of sports physiotherapy as well you can work wonderfully well being a part of musculoskeletal physiotherapist as well you can have your own clinical setups where you can add up these practices and of course you can earn well because that's what the main concern of people uh, that's the that's what the main concern people have so that's the reason i took this myths and facts of chest physiotherapy i really want to know uh, is there any other myth that you have which i have not covered so just try to put it over there if i can do that i will definitely do that and i will definitely write uh, i will definitely try to explain it is there any other myth uh, yes you will get the recording of this lecture i will be putting it on my youtube you can take it balloon technique was amazing thanks thank you so much i hope you all like my balloon idea <laughs> and now you all can teach it to your students as well you must have seen my pictures i use a lot of balloon in my lectures because i love i i i can relate it with my lungs so that's why uh okay thank you uh so someone has written less scope in india no you don't have less scope in india that is the biggest myth and i am practicing since 9 years as a chest physiotherapist there is a lot and lot of scope in india of a pulmonary physio or a cardiac physio that's what i said you really need to you really need to know your worth first you really need to explore it just don't you know just don't uh, constrict your uh, practice only in the hospital setting or something if you are only attached to a hospital then of course you will have limitations in that have your own practice as well because that will help you if you want to go into teaching you can get into teaching as well you have a lot of scope being a physiotherapist and when i say physiotherapist i mean all streams of physiotherapist it is just not for chest physio or anything we are in such a great profession that there are so many opportunities for us it is just that we need to understand what to grab so being in india i don't think so you have to really worry about this 
Is suctioning done by physiotherapist? Yes, suctioning is done by physiotherapist. If you have a, a nursing staff available, you can always ask a nursing staff to do that. If not, then definitely we need to do that. Um, being a chest physio, I still hear from other people that you won't get a job. That's also the biggest myth. Exactly. That's that's what I said that you can, you know, in fact, there are so many hospital setups. Of course, you will get a job. You can always start up as a chest physio in a hospital setup. I started it from uh, Sefi Hospital in Bombay. Uh, that's how actually we all start. So, of course, that is for the exposure part. But definitely you do get a job as a chest physio. And then you can explore yourself ahead. You can work with whatever you want to do. And you can get, you can, of course, explore other parts of physio as well. Like as, as I said, I do a lot of musculoskeletal physiotherapy. I am also a certified antenatal postnatal therapist from US. So I keep on practicing everything and I'm, I, I love doing all that. So I don't think so. You need to constrict yourself. And will you best college for MPT in chest PT in India? See, I did it from Jamia Hamdard and I love it. So you can obviously opt for it. Um, if you will go for hospital setting, then you will earn similar to BPT. No, there, every hospital pays you uh, separately for a master degree. And it's it, it varies in all the hospitals. So I think if, if you're getting same uh, amount what the bachelor is getting, then you need to really raise your voice for that because masters do get uh, differently uh, paid in any kind of hospital setup. Uh. Is there any uh, can incent okay can incentive spirometer can incentive spirometer be given when wheezing is present okay so uh, this is a very good question and I can actually teach one hour on the same topic so you know when if the patient is in an acute case and having wheezing then you don't give incentive spirometer and if you want to know more about it then you have you'll have to attend my next lecture. Because you are not supposed to give spirometer to all the cases, those are there in the ICU. You have to be very much limited. Sometimes you can actually make the condition bad by just giving deep breathing or incentive spirometer. Um, in postural drainage, what if we are unable to position the patient in that position due to another problems or surgery or other monitoring devices? Yes. So this is a very good question. Uh, you cannot give an exact postural drainage position when you are in any kind of ICU setup. And that is the reason we name that position as modified positioning or modified postural drainage. And that's what you can do when you have patients who is connected to ventilator or who is having drains or a lot of ECG leads and everything, right? So for such cases, you have to just modify the position. Like suppose if you cannot give full prone position, make it semi prone. Right. So that's why we use this term as modified positioning for such cases. And you can definitely give that because that is better than giving no drainage position to a patient. Yes, any college is a good college. I don't think so. Uh, is some blood group only can get coronavirus? It's not like that. Initially, there was a research in which they have said, you know, like that O group is not uh, is getting least affected with that and everything. But uh, as a now, like as as the spread, if, if you can see the spread of the virus, that thing is not very much evident now. And as I said, that you know, every country is showing different demographics. And I have been doing a lot and lot of research on COVID nineteen. That's my favorite topic recently. So once I get a time, or if I can take another lecture, then definitely I would love to share all the researches and all the evidences from the scratch that we have, uh, that I have collected for COVID nineteen and all the treatment differences that has happened from uh, December till date. Yes, I will update my next lecture. Uh, please take lectures. Uh, see, dear, I take a, my I take a lot of workshops on uh, cardiopulmonary physio and pulmonary rehabilitation, and I teach all advanced techniques in that, all the techniques that most of the physios are not even practicing and that I have learned from various countries and I've come over here. So I don't think so that this virtual platform is actually a great platform to teach all those advanced techniques. Maybe the lockdown gets over or someday then you can attend my workshop. And I would love to teach all that I can teach through a virtual teaching method. I'm a chest PT. Can I help COVID patients for treatment? Yes, Aarti, you can definitely help. And uh, that's what I said. We can, uh, we can, we will talk about it. Can you cure? I can't cure COVID. You need medicines for that. Uh, 
Please give reason, ma'am. I didn't. Uh, I missed your question, Mr. Deepak. You can just write your question again if I can answer. How to encourage patients for giving chest PT as most of the PT fear about it. Encourage patients. You're talking about patients. Patients are not. Uh, see, you know what? If your patient is scared of chest PT after your first treatment, then just one thing I'll tell you that check your percussion. Many times, physio gives such pathetic percussions that you know the patient is phobic taking another treatment, and they just want to feel that noise of that tap. So you need to really be very specific when you are giving a percussion because that's what actually scares a patient most. You know, आवाज सुनके या उसको अगर लग रहा है, if you're hitting that patient bad. So I don't think so. Any patient is uh, ever scared of taking a chest PT or anything. in fact patients feel much better after taking a chest pt because they can breathe better and they they feel that clearance you know that secretion after the removal of secretions they feel lighter so i don't think so they are scared of it uh okay uh thank you i would love if you all attend fine one second um yeah talking about incentive and wheezing yes i will be i just said about that ki it's a huge topic and i really need to teach you that because that's what i teach a lot uh, in my workshops so i will definitely teach it workshop in bangalore yes actually i had a workshop in bangalore in july but then because of all this lockdown everything you know how what has happened is there any other specific technique we can give to pediatric chest physiotherapy a uh, pediatric chest is entirely different and it varies from an adult chest physiotherapy so yes there are other techniques that you can give to a peds or a ped patient which you cannot give to adults so th there are slight variations in that definitely so yeah it does vary in that um yes hyderabad i will keep workshop in hyderabad lucknow i have taken one in era and inshallah i'll take it again so i think Uh, yeah, what is the role of chest pain in asthma patients? There is a huge role of chest pain in asthma patients, and uh, of course that includes in the respiratory conditions, which I'll be teaching ahead. And uh, yes, you can do after uh, we can do anything after bypass surgery. Yes, CABG that is one of the most uh, uh, most common case that we physiotherapists see in a cardiac ICU. Uh, treating the patients in CABG, so of course we have a huge role as a chest physio in CABG, where we, uh, where we start with the proper cardiac rehabilitation program from when, uh, from the time the patient is coming outside the so like twenty four hours maybe say you can say after the surgical procedure. So yes, you have a huge role in a uh, this thing in CABGs. Uh, yes, I will update you about the next lecture. I think anything else? Okay. i think we can just wrap it up i hope you all understood it and uh, as i said it was the basic thing i hope you learned something new from this though it was a basic thing i hope it cleared your myths and if you have more myths then please come up with that i would love to clear those in fact you know what whenever i take any lecture i in i instead learn a lot of new things from people who are attending those lectures and that's how i think you'd grow your knowledge by sharing your knowledge so more than teaching i will say that i just love sharing my knowledge and uh, i will uh, differentiating yes uh, i will do i think i should just sit hold and make videos only <laughs> that's how it's written uh yeah okay yes stick okay. i'll try to make more videos but you know uh just subscribe my this channel which you are uh, watching because i will be putting more chest physio videos on this and yes as i said this was a basic lecture because in this time limitation i cannot teach you everything i learned in 2 years of my masters and everything that i'm practicing since 9 years i need a lot of your time your dedication your interest and i hope i'll come up with more topics and i hope this lecture has at least drawn a bit of your interest towards chest physiotherapy and uh, you know like i hope you all work well in that and we will be coming up with a lot of interesting lectures and i would love if you all could attend it and i'm always available for your doubts you can dm me with your doubts i love helping it uh, helping students out with that and uh, thank you so yes sir uh, i will tell you the topic for my next lecture as well just keep following me on facebook and instagram at dr samana sayer and uh, so i think we'll just wrap up thank you thank you so much thank you all for your comments for your lovely comments my email id it's better you take my instagram id it's dr samana sayed official and facebook is dr samana sayed so you can follow me over there 
and we are coming with more live sessions on instagram as well so you can join that and plus we upload the videos on youtube as well so thank you bye and be safe be at home follow all the rules even if you if if you are coming out of lockdown be safe you are a physiotherapist you have to be safe and you have to aware everyone who is around you to follow the precautions because that is our duty so be a good physiotherapist and be and be a good indian citizen bye take care um, take care bye